Now, I don't know if you know this, but on November the 3rd, we went through a great ordeal. Anybody notice what that was? The election, amen. <laughs> election time, we went, been trying to figure out, uh, well, the country's been trying to figure out who the president was going to be. Now, this particular situation has brought about some concerns to people. Some people are going to be happy. Some people are going to be sad. But what's amazing is that there seems to be more people focused on the people than on the Lord. Amen. 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 Seems to be more people focused on the people. Mm -hmm. So, today the Lord says, I need you to talk to the congregation of those in Facebook land with this title. When the war is over, I will wear a crown. Now, just say that with me. When the war, when the war, war is over, is over I, will wear I will wear a crown. A crown. My brothers and sisters, we've been in a war. Amen. I don't know if you want to call it Democrats versus Republicans. I don't, want, don't know if you want to call it uh, Trump versus Biden. I don't know what you want to call it, but this country uh -huh. has been in the midst of a battle. Well, we yeah. have called it an election day, but there's been so much controversy. Well, there have been people upset with other people because they voiced <laughs> who they were going to vote right. for. Amen. 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 And they didn't just voice it, but they were adamant about how they voiced it. Mm, uh, they would have some derogatory comment about the other uh, official, or other person that's running. Somebody had to say something negative mm. about the other person. Y'all can say amen, it's amen. true. Amen. Facebook will support me amen. because you put it on there. All right. amen. Uh, <laughs> you put your comments, you put your... Daddy, but the thing of it, the Lord says, my concern is that in the midst of this battle, my people are losing their crown. They have not thought about how to maintain wearing a crown. Now, there are some folks that would absolutely tell me and say, well, look, I didn't have no crown in the first place before the election started. Oh. That is sad because an individual that has accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior needs to understand, and you will hear this more as we go through the message, that he's making us kings and priests. Well, he has given us authority in this earth. But if you never felt as though that the Lord Jesus Christ has put you in a position of authority, then I guess you never felt as though you had a crown. And that's something for us to look at because he wants us to realize that everything that he experienced and everything that he went through he did it so that we could become kings and priests. Now, automatically, I know a lot of you say, well, I know I ain't no priest. <laughs> uh. But you could be a king. And virtually, you could be a queen. Amen. Amen. Because he's putting you in authority once you accept him fully in your life. So he says, I need you to talk to them today. To tell us that when this battle is over, when the war is ended, this was just a battle in the midst of the war. <coughs> when the war is over, I will wear a crown. Those folks used to have a song that says, We shall wear a crown. I just thought it was a good song. <laughs> we shall wear a crown. But the real, the reality of it is, and the spiritualness of it, is that 
Every day is a battle. Amen. And my life is the epic part of a war. I'm always against something. I'm always struggling and fighting against something. And every day is a battle. Did anybody say amen? Amen. Every day is a battle. It is a battle. And the more things I seem to get into, the more battles I have. Mm -hmm. Come on now, say that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, as I was growing up, I, I considered to be slightly old now, just slightly. Uh -huh. <laughs> and got the whole old part. I'm just slightly. Mm -hmm. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> every, ever since I was growing up, and I called myself being successful. I did not realize how many battles I was stepping into. Mm -hmm. I remember going to get out of high school. Uh, that was a battle. Get out of high school. Amen. Then going to college. Every semester was a battle. All right now. Amen. Making sure you maintain a certain grade point average. Okay. Then after that, I started to work and world and wanted to be more successful. I became a manager at one of the retail stores in Lubbock, Texas, and that was a battle. Mm -hmm. See, the war was constantly going on. I was always in the midst of something, but every little thing that I was going through, I had a battle. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, becoming a father was a a parent was a battle. Everything was a battle. Mm -hmm. And I noticed one thing about every one of those battles. I was up against the same people. Mm -hmm. They did not change. Mm -hmm. And that was self. Amen, amen. That was my biggest war there. Self. Mm -hmm. How to deal with self. Self would always bring me down. Well. So the Lord says, I need us to talk just a little bit to help us to see what are we doing about some of the battles. Mm -hmm. And since we just had this election, it's, it was a good uh, preface to talk about it as a battle because there are so many people concerned about what was going to happen, what is going to happen, will the transition be smooth, all type of talk is going on. Yeah. And you know one thing I learned about the wild and Satan, they love to put fear all right. All right. in the minds of people. Well. And you know what I learned about people who are not of the Lord? Mm. They love to accept the fear. That the wild of Satan puts forth. Amen. Amen. See, if you trust in the Lord, you're not going to be caught up in the fear that is presented. I'm not saying things aren't going to happen. I'm just saying you won't get caught up in that fear. So, this is where we're going to go. If you have your Bibles, I pray you have your Bibles Amen. with you today. We want to take a look in the book of Proverbs. The 24th number of Proverbs, verses 17 through 23. For those of you on Facebook, those of you here, please repeat after me. I have my Bible. I have my Bible. It is the Word. It is the Word. The Word will hurt me. The Word will hurt me. The Word will help me. The Word will heal me. The Word will heal me. When I accept this Word. That I, I shall be changed in preparation, in preparation for, the second coming for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. This word truly is going to help us today, and it helps us every Sunday and Wednesday that we come into the midst of the word. If we just accept it, it does something to our lives. Amen. So if we go to Proverbs. 24 verses 17 through 23. Let's get started. Proverbs 24 verse 17 through 
18. Just gonna take these two at a time. 17 through 18. It says, Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. Lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. Now, my brothers and sisters, here's something you have to understand. There's a song that goes out that he has the whole world in his hands. If he has the whole world in his hands, you can't make a change in what he's holding. Amen. 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 So you have to either accept what he does or you don't accept what he does. So when I looked at this verse here, it says, Rejoice not with thine enemy fallen. I thought about these people who were against each other. Here you have you know, Democrats, you have Republicans, you had uh, Biden, and you had Trump. Now, whoever wins, whoever was going to be the winner, it took a bigger person not to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, y'all not hear me now. Yeah. Since one of the things the Lord doesn't want us to get caught up in is to become as the world is. The tendency of the flesh is to put somebody down. Amen. To make them feel bad. If they fallen, step on them. Right. Put your foot on them. Uh -uh. Hold them down. Uh -huh. That's the tendency of the flesh. Yes. And if you haven't noticed, that's your tendency. Uh -huh. When somebody's down, you want to go ahead and put some gas on the fire. Uh -huh. Talk about, I'm going to put this out and throw some gasoline on the fire. Uh -huh. Then somebody said, well, no, nah, I'm not going to be that bad. I'm just going to put some light through it. <laughs> I don't care what you use. Well. You are not using what the Lord has given you. Well, That's what the Lord is trying to get. If you throw your opinion on somebody else's troubles, it's either gasoline or lighter fluid. Mm -hmm. Or maybe some of y'all use kerosene. Mm -hmm. But your opinion ignites. My Lord. Amen. Come on now, this is all right. Your opinion ignites. If your opinion is not of the Lord, if you're not using something to try to calm people down, yo, else that you put on Facebook, like people don't know what you're saying. Yeah, I'm gonna play with you because you play. Amen, amen. F with all those little, what the little stars. <laughs> Somebody once said, says, well, Pastor, some of your people make you look bad. I said, no, they don't. Yeah. They don't make me look bad. But they sure make the Lord look bad. Because they're going to tell somebody they can leave. And here they are demonstrating how Satan operates more than they demonstrate how the Lord operates. Oh, yeah, come on. Don't get quiet on me now. Amen. Because see, the Lord wants us to understand when that war is over, uh -huh. after you done gotten off your chest, after you have ignited something that was already started, after you done thrown your kerosene, gasoline, charcoal, lighter fluid on the situation, uh -huh. you need to go to the mirror and take a look and see if you have a crown. All right. Yeah. Have you done something or anything that has pleased the Lord? And see, that's why we have to understand as Christians, our concern, he tells us don't get, be worried about what's going on in the world. Our concern should be focused on how does the Lord see us? How does it see me when somebody cusses me out? He's not looking at the person who cuts me out. He's looking at the person that says, I love you, Lord. I believe in you and I trust you. And will that person maintain their crown? 
as a king upon this earth, as one that's in authority. You see, we have the ability to be an authority over self. Hello, somebody. Amen. You have the ability. You ain't got to let go. Tell me, I can't help myself. That's a bold-faced lie. You can't help yourself. All right, come on now. Come on. You can't do it by yourself. Because the Bible says we can do all things through Christ Jesus. And if you tell me you can't help yourself, then you just told me you don't have the Lord. Amen. 
You act like you better than everybody else. You act like, hey, I'm not the one who failed. <laughs> Look at you. Because you're still up and have not fallen, Lord. you should say to yourself, what can I do to help this individual who was my enemy? Amen. And you know what the Lord, he gave me the answer. He says, to do good to those who what? Despite the How did he tell us to treat our enemies? He told us to do good to our enemies. Love your enemies. Don't act like you ain't got enough because when you in the battle, All right. what you, you got a whole lot of enemies. Right. Can't nobody tell you anything. And that's not how we say it. Can't nobody tell me nothing. All right. All right. You got an enemy everywhere. You got an enemy in the mirror. You got an enemy in, in every corner of your house. Go wherever you go, the enemy goes, the enemy goes to you. Right. All right. That enemy is always there. It's always there. Mm. That's what Paul says. Every time I try to do good, evil is always present. Evil is always present. Yes. So he says, let us know here in the, in the 17th and 18th verse. He says, well, I want you to realize that you need to have your mind focused on you to have your crown. Right. Everybody understand when I say crown? Yes, sir. See, there's a crown. There's a crown of righteousness that the Lord wants you to have. My Lord. There's a crown of life the Lord wants you to have. There's a crown. And when you learn to walk like you have a crown, you be less likely to let that crown fall. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, moving on, look at this. I like this. When I was writing, I said, all right. Philippians 4 and 4. Go there in your Bibles. Philippians 4 and 4. It's a commandment repeated twice for emphasis so that we will not shrug it off. There's a commandment in Philippians 4 and 4 that is uh, repeated twice. Now with this Command was repeated, it was repeated so that we would make sure we understood what the Lord was saying. It is a commandment that we must deliberately, say deliberately, deliberately. we must deliberately choose. I mean, when I say deliberately, that means it's, it's almost feel as though it's something against you that's stopping you from choosing it. Amen. But when you have to deliberately choose something, it's almost like it's a struggle. You're going to have to make yourself right. choose this. Amen, amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. So, it says you will have to deliberately choose to obey. obey. Deliberately choose to obey. Especially when you're in difficult circumstances. And we've been in some difficult circumstances, haven't we, not church? Amen. Anybody here have not been in difficult Amen. circumstances? I get in difficult circumstances all the time. And I deliberately have to make myself obey. And all the reason I have to deliberately make myself obey, because I'm so easy to want to say I ain't going to do it. Amen. All right, all right. Amen. Do I have any I ain't going to do it people in here? All right, Okay, what you I ain't gonna do it. <laughs> yep, yeah, they'll say that too. You can't make me do it. That's why you deliberately have to choose to obey. Let me tell you something. Once you come to the point in your life that you will overcome yourself and you can fight through the struggles of a flesh desire not obey, you'll find yourself better off and in better standings with the Lord. Amen. Yes, you will. Amen. So it says, difficult circumstances, it has to do with our attitude. I'm going to cover that word up. Amen. We don't have that here. Next word, we don't have attitudes. We, we, nobody has attitudes. 
not all the time. Our attitudes develop in the battle. Amen. Amen. Our attitudes come in the battle. All right. Let me make sure I'm clear. The battle is when you sit there talking about your thinking, and now the attitude has developed, and your attitude and your thoughts are saying they ain't gonna get away with it. All right. Self has already been ignited. All right. Hello? Amen. Self has already risen up. And you know you've been with self longer than anybody else has been with them. And you know that self is not going to be played. Right. Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. You don't want to play self. Self not going to be played. You're going to play me right there, not me. What you say now? I'm going to You ain't going to play me. You ain't gonna put me down and act like I'm a nobody. I know I'm somebody. Y'all hear me? All right, all right, all right. All right now. See, no. This is what the Lord said. That's, that's a difficult circumstance. All right. All right. <coughs> it has to do with our attitude, mm. which depends on our mental focus. Mental focus. I can tell you about me. Come on now. See, I can tell you that when I'm not focused on the Lord, I can give you an attitude that won't wait. Amen. You know, sometimes I have to stop looking at Facebook. Amen. Amen. Because my attitude won't be, what do you call yourself a Christian? What are you doing in the church? What are you doing? Yeah. See, my attitude wants to act that. All right. Because my flesh. Myself, I have not overcome. Amen. My focus is not on the Lord. Well, and if you wonder why, trouble is. The Old Testament, when Satan went up to a meeting with God, and he was asked, Where are you coming from? He says, I've been going to uh, and fro. Looking for living witness people who proclaim to be a Christian but act like a fool. All right. Come on. Okay, you feel it, you don't like it, but that's what happens. See, when I get on Facebook and I start saying that, I want to act like a fool. That's what I want to act like. Lord, have mercy. I want to let go. That's why he says you deliberately have to choose to obey. Amen. Amen. Deliberately. Yes. You deliberately have to choose not to be cussing people down and talking about your spouses and putting other people down. You deliberately have to stop putting gasoline on broken down situations. Amen. Amen. Deliberately Amen. have to obey. Mm. Is it a good feeling? No, I didn't say it's a good feeling. <laughs> Not a good feeling, but it'll bring you joy in the morning. Amen. It'll bring great joy in the morning. You may cry through the night, but there'll be great joy. Before long, the Lord, you forget all about the battle that you were in if you listen and obey the Lord. So, Which depends on our mental focus, which depends on our choice. Depends on our choice. What are we choosing? So, let's get to it. The choice to rejoice often must go deliberately against how we feel. Can y'all say amen to that? Amen. Because see, in order to be a child of the king, you got to go against your feelings. Well, I have to go against my feelings every time I go on Facebook. And I see people that the Lord wants to bless, that He wants to lift up out of the monkey wire play of life, constantly putting themselves deeper and deeper in the hole. Amen. It hurts. It hurts for me to see people get caught up in their feelings. 
and you get caught up in those feelings, you just open up the door for everybody else to say, tell me your feelings. <laughs> tell me what you think. And they do it too. You throw your feelings out there. They go, everybody else going to tell you what they think. And you know what that does to yourself? It gets you high and high and high. Y'all ought to say amen. Come on, I know it. Amen. You throw your feelings out there and let somebody else start throwing their feelings on top of your feet. All right, you better hush now. Well, sooner or later, somebody's going to say, hey, I, 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 I know they didn't just say that. Let me just tell them something about them. <laughs> That's how this time works. Amen. So, Amen. when we go through trials, have I lost y'all already? When we are tested or treated unfairly, I, I know that's nobody in here, it's okay. <laughs> when we're disappointed by people, I know that's nobody in Facebook. Yeah. Our circumstances, we are faced with a decision. Oh. Amen. Oh. Wait a minute. Go through trials, mm -hmm. treated unfairly, mm -hmm. disappointed by people, uh -huh. our circumstances. Uh -huh. Any of those, we have to make a decision. decision. Oh. That's every day. Uh -huh. That's sometimes, uh, that's several times during the day. Uh -huh. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have to go through these things. And he says, Will we obey this command? And here it is. To rejoice in the Lord, or will we allow ourselves to be swept alone by our feelings? See that Philippians 4 and 4, and some of y'all looked it up, it says, Rejoice in the Lord. Always and again, I say, Rejoice. You know how often I need to be told that in a day? When I start going through my feelings. When my feelings start to cause me to be in a battle that I'm about to lose. I need to have a recording and put in one of those little things in my ear that it, it, it automatically comes on and says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Because I get in my feelings too often. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. The wives of Satan knows that my biggest weakness is myself. And the way that I get myself to act up is to put myself in my feelings. Yes, sir. Man. Because I feel like I'm more important than anybody else. All right now. I know I'm the only one to feel that way. I feel like, what about me? What about me? I'm always trying to do for somebody else. Make sure somebody else is okay. Who's taking care of me? The Lord says, I've been there for you. Amen. Told you I'd be with you to the end of the world. I would never leave you nor forsake you. Did you think I was lying to you? I'm for real. I'm going to do it in spirit and in truth. If anybody can stand by your side, the Lord can be your anchor. But I forgot. I forgot. You wasn't focused on the Lord. You're not focused on him. You're focused on him. Mm. Well, y'all need to quit talking about me in my face now. That's not nice. So, I want you to look at Revelations 1, verse 5. I had to really, the Lord work with me with this message. Sister Walker would ask y'all weekend, you all right? You all right? I'm just trying to work through this list. Mm -hmm. This 
but he gives me something, lays me down in it. He told me, put your armor on before you get there Sunday morning. Oh, Lord. Amen. Amen. He says, they're not going to aim for your head. Put your breastplate of righteousness on. They don't want to miss. They go to the back. Well. Amen. <laughs> In Revelations 1 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins. Now, this is to help those who did not know that you had a crown. Because the Lord says, I need you to point out to them that when God the Father was upset, he put a plan in action so that those who loved him would not be sent to hell. Amen. Hello. Thank you, Lord. So Jesus Christ was a sacrificial lamb. And you need to understand, he was not a sacrificial lamb for you to get into your feelings. All right, now. Mm -hmm. yeah, mercy, Lord, have mercy. For you to let your feelings run wild. Well, he was a sacrificial lamb so that your soul would have an opportunity to be with the Lord Amen. in heaven. And so that you may have a life more abundantly. Let me say it in this fashion. Because some people do not understand abundantly a better life. You have a better life. Now let me tell you what a better life is. A better life is something like this. The other day I was hungry. And we didn't have any food to eat. And Sister Walker asked me, what do you want to eat? I said, mm, do we have some wings? She said, yes. I said, hmm, do we have some beans? She said, yes. I said, that's what I want. So beans and wings. Now, it may not sound like much to you, but if you realize, in the beginning, I didn't have anything. Right, right. And my life just got better when I was able to eat them. Beans, beans and weed. More than I eat me some beans and weed. Yes. She looked at me, she said, I said, you want something? No, I don't want it. Girl, you don't know what you miss. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you see, the Lord will fix it where you have a better life. Amen. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. I was a Christian of a better life. Was it a state? Maybe not to you. But my stomach said, felt like a state. Felt good. Are you understanding? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So he said, like more abundantly, he was saying, he said, I'm going to make you a rich person. He says, I'm going to fix it where you have no need. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you need to be taken care of. Thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody. Thank you. I'm going to need care of. I was hungry. I wasn't hungry for a steak. I was just hungry. All right, all right. Lord, have mercy. And I was content with those beans and beans. Y'all need to try it sometime. I'm <laughs> But look, he says this. Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness of the first begotten, of the dead and the prince of the kings. kings. This is what the Lord said I had to point out. Did y'all notice kings is not capitalized? Amen. Amen. It's not capitalized because the kings that he's referring to are you and I. All right. He's saying he's the prince of us. All right. We are kings and queens. And I walk with a crown on my head. It's not for you to see my crown. All right. I know you looked at that big ball head all of a sudden and said, where that crown is? Yeah. <laughs> That's what people do. It's not meant for you to see my crown. Well. It's meant for me to act like I got a crown on. And when I have my crown on, I walk like a king. All right. 
right. Black or cheap? Oh, Let's just say that. We have 
for the Lord. Well, have mercy. And that makes my Lord upset. Because mm -hmm. I know he can do anything. Yes, he can. He can change anybody. My Lord. And especially he can change me. me. Mm -hmm. So, and has made us and has made us kings and priests unto God. Who is that's looking at us as kings and priests? God the Father. He's looking down there. Jesus Christ is making us kings and priests. Jesus Christ had us all the way up to the point where we had the crown starting to fit good on our head. Where our act right was acting right. Amen. Uh, that was good. I'm going to say that again. Y'all can hear my act right was that right? Y'all tell me, see what I mean? I was able to maintain. I was able to say, mm, I will hold back. I'm not going to say it. Mm. I'm going to give the Lord place in my right. He said these words. He says, unto God. When God looks down now, he says, this is my own imagination. Please, this is not scriptorial. But sometimes I think God the Father talks to his son, Jesus Christ, and says, I, I gave you Maurice Walker. He been with you for 35 years. And he ain't doing nothing. He keeps entering self. Over and over and over. And I'm hearing the Lord Jesus Christ have to stand on my behalf. Have mercy, Lord. A little more time, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Give me a little more time with Maurice. I'll get it right, Lord. I'll get it right. Just give me a little more time. Then God the Father looks at his son and says, You know, tomorrow's not promise. All right, all right now. If he can't get it now. He may never get it. Hello, All right. All right. I just have this imagination. This imagination conversation. Because Jesus Christ has to go to him on my behalf. And as much as the Lord has been doing in my life, he says, oh, I, I'm doing everything. But I will work hard to get Maurice right. To get him there. He says, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. God wants you better than you are. Amen. 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 It's all right. He wants you better. It's all right. May I say in this fashion, he wants you consistently better. Amen. Not if and now and then and every now and then and every so often. So, Proverbs 24, 19 and 20. I'm almost finished. Somebody say amen. 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 <laughs> Fret not thyself because of evil men. Y'all know, if they hadn't said this, I wouldn't have done that. Those evil people. Oh Y'all know who they are. Okay. In our lives, those evil folks. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Neither be thou envious of the wicked. I said, wow. For there shall be no reward to the evil man. All right. The cattle of the wicked shall be put out. And Galatians 6 and 1, and he became a mind. It says, we see a brother and sister in the fall. Ye that are spiritual, go to them and restore them in the faith. Amen. I don't see y'all restoring on Facebook. Y'all killing each other. Amen. 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 They restoring my Amen. Life. Amen. Your comments are irreversible once they are read. All right. All right. Once they are read, you cannot take it back. What I said, what I wanted to say, that's the problem. Uh. Your flesh was overriding your spirit. My Lord, my Lord. So here's what he says. He says, fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be ye envious at the wicked. 
And I was confused on what Indias was. Anybody know what Indias is? Yeah. Yes. Jealousy is a synonym of it. Yes, it is. It's a synonym. It's a synonym of it. So I had said, no, what's the Indians? No, I'm sorry, Facebook. I, I'm a somewhat educated person, but every now and then you got to ask the Lord, how did you mean this? Come on now. How did you mean this particular word? So, I looked up envious. It's an adjective, feeling of showing envy. I'm envious of their happiness, an envious glance. And then there are some other synonyms jealous. Convectious, desirous, grudging, begrudging, resentful, childish, bitter, malicious, spiteful, green with envy. And I said, that didn't help me any because I don't understand some of those words either. So the Lord said, well, demonstrate. I need two people to demonstrate. All right, here comes two. I need y'all to come up here. He says, oh no. 
his flesh says, you're not going to get the best of me. Yes. You got to go get away. I'm going to have to throw something Amen. back. Hello, mm -hmm. church. Amen. Amen. And when this happens, both of them, she left the Lord in her set. Right. As soon as he felt as though he needed to do it, he left the Lord and entered into self. Yes. And the battle is on. Amen. 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 And if they do the one ridiculous thing, the Bible says, confess your faults one to isn't that right? Yes, Amen. sir. Amen. Well, <laughs> let me show you how y'all confess your problems. Who wants to say you? Stay right over there. Girl, do you know what he did to me today? Mm -hmm. I asked him to be at home at a certain time so that we could go out and have a little time together. Where is he at? What does he do? He went his pants. Stop. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury. <laughs> Has Sister Ashford heard her fault? No. No, no, no. Has Sister Ashford heard his fault? Yes, sir. Yes. Did the scripture says confess their fault? <laughs> or did the scripture says confess your, your fault one to another? All right now. Hello, church. Yes, sir. That's our problem. Amen. We want to throw our opinion after somebody else. So she just opened a sister Ashley to give her opinion. Sister Ashley tell somebody else they can give their opinion. Somebody else can give their opinion. That's why brothers and sisters need to go to one another that's in the Lord right. so that this stuff don't become worldwide. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. Did anybody understand this? Amen. Because our problem is, is that what, that's what we do. We start giving room for the devil. All right. We give place for the devil, and the devil is anybody in their flesh. Amen. Because he told God, I'm seeking whom I may divide. Yeah. And we didn't hear the answer of who he was looking for, but he's looking for all those fleshly people who are not led by the Spirit all right, all right, all right, all right. of the Lord. Uh -huh. And when you get fleshly, you got the nerve to throw out all kind of stuff out your mouth. Amen. 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 Right. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Through the years, I've learned this the hard way. Uh -huh. When I get in my flesh, uh -huh. when I act like I want to leave, Sister Walker, I tell her to go somewhere. Then whenever I leave, I say, You crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Better get back there. You see, the flesh can put you in bad situations. Amen. Amen. The flesh can put you in bad situations. Let's see if I can get this to come back. Praise the Lord. Amen. Lord, I want y'all to see this. This is what we look like. All right. Amen. 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 Some of us don't get this close. Because <laughs> we, you know, how we are. Back up off me, give me my split. Yeah. You walk up on me like that. Mm -hmm. Kind of how we Yeah. But this is the guy. Here we are with each other. And you know what it's really saying? When we're in the battle mode, we don't care what children know. All right, all right. We want to put them in the midst of the back. So, in the 29th verse, this comes out of the same chapter. Amen. Say not, I will do so to him as he has done to me. Yes. Wow. The 
famous words in elementary was, they hit me first. They hit me first. Gave the flesh the full authority to hit back. Yes. Mama told him. Grandfather told him. Everybody else. But the Lord says, don't you do it. Don't you give that flesh room to leave me. And for you to fall into self. Don't do it. You need to be saying to yourself, no matter what goes on today, my Lord, my Lord. trouble don't last. Always. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to wear Lord, yes. my crown. Amen. 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 I'm going to wear my crown. Thank you, Lord. I don't care what happens, I'm going to wear my crown. Oh, yes. Why is that so important? Let me tell you why it's so important. Because he was wounded for my transgression. Yes. He was bruised mm -hmm. for our iniquity. Yes. Yes. Now, now, now we got that. Here's what we don't get. The chastisement of our peace. This is why my flesh rose up. Because they don't give me peace. They put me down. They're talking about me. He says the chastisement of your peace was upon you. Mm -hmm. And with the stripes, we are you're healed. healed. Uh -huh. You need to say to yourself, he went through all of this to make me a king and a queen. But I'm not going to lose it through one infraction. Amen. Amen. All right. They put him on the cross. Before they did that, they whipped him with many stripes. This was his chastisement for my peace. He bled for my peace. He bled so I could wear a crown. He took these beatings so I would be able to have authority in a sensing world. He took this for me and for you. I don't understand. Why would you want to leave the Lord? You should want to leave. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, there are some pictures we need to have in our head every now and then. Amen. 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 This is what he went through. My Lord. So that we can wear a crown. Yes. I want you to understand. I'm fighting every day. Amen. To keep a crown. My Lord. The battle still come. But I want to wear my crown. Oh, yes. Oh. I want to have a crown on. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy. You might not can see, but I can tell when it's slipping. All right. You know when you yes. kind of get it sideways oh, and yes. fall. Mm -hmm. I need to do something to get this crown right. Yeah. I pray you understand today. Man. That from today, tomorrow, the next day, those in your Facebook land, no matter how long it takes. Don't lose your if you have received something from this message and the Lord has placed it on your heart to give, you can support this ministry through Cash App online at dollar sign living witness MC, or you can do so through Tithely going through our website, living witness missionary church.com. Click on the learn about giving menu button. Or you can click on the gift that's in the top right corner that says support this ministry through Toddly.